So it looks like Samsung may be releasing some new Galaxy Buds this year. And yeah, just new Galaxy Buds. Get on, get faded, get Michael here, welcome back to Technoid. And guys, I have been away for a few days because I've been having some uh, some situations going on. I want to keep it private, I don't want to discuss it. But long story short, we are still working to resolve this. And uh, I just kind of took a little time off just to get everything done. But welcome back everybody. And today we got quite a bit of stories to talk about and one of them being something that I've already known. But let's get right into it. So the first story of the day is Samsung. So Samsung's Unpacked 2019 is one week away. And um, for the most part, I'm pretty excited for it. I am looking forward to seeing what they have. I'm looking forward to see what they announce. It'll be great and amazing to check it out. But apparently there is a lot of speculation on some new headphones. Now I've already talked majorly about new headphones, I've talked about the AKGs, but now we're hearing from Samsung themselves. So according to BRG, they are saying that Samsung could possibly be considering releasing new Galaxy Buds in a new color to match the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus 5G. Now. In terms of technology, it's the same headphone. There is no difference whatsoever. You're not gonna notice any real difference. The only difference is just the color. And what you're looking at are the rumored colors. And they do definitely match the note, I will say that much. Now, would I think Samsung would do something like this? Absolutely. Do I think it's gonna happen? Maybe because I know Samsung wants to match their products with things. And this is the perfect way to do it. You have Galaxy Buds, which are the best selling uh, wireless headphones for Android phones, and they're doing very well. The sales have been solid, the price is right. So releasing a new color would make sense. And also a reason why I think it's also could happen is because it's simple. They want to keep expanding the lineup. You have yellow, white, black, and whatever color this is, and maybe some others. Now, it is disappointing that there isn't going to be any new technology, but I don't expect them to obviously do it now. I would want to wait till February when they have their overall Galaxy uh, lineup, when they unveil all their products. That would be the place to update them. But for the most part, they've held up pretty well. They've been a great pair of headphones, great battery life, and I have had no complaints. And by the way, everybody watching this, I am doing a follow-up on how to clean them, part two, so stay tuned for that. So that's story number one, the consideration and option of the new Galaxy Buds possibly coming in a new color. So that's one. Now let's talk number two. Now this story has been making pathways with every YouTuber, everybody talking about it. Apple finally got caught with their privacy issues. And I've been saying this for so long, it doesn't really shock me because I've already known this, but I feel like you guys need to hear it and stop arguing about Apple's privacy crap. So, as you guys know, there was a report from Bloomberg talking about Google and Amazon, how they have been leaking and also listening to people's combos when they use Alexa and Google Assistant, especially with their smart speakers. Well, now a news article has circulated that Apple is now in the mix where they actually had people listening to people's commands and series and listening to what they say so it helps make them better. A former employee came out and kind of spilled the beans. Now, on the one hand, I'm sitting here going, I already knew this was happening. I don't know why everybody likes to make a big deal that Apple's the most secure, the most secure, most secure. They do the same thing that Google and, and Amazon do. The only difference is that I believe Apple is just very good at hiding it. I don't think that they're like they're not guilty, but at the same time, they're just as guilty. They like to talk all about Android. They like to talk about this and that, but this news article came out and stated what they're doing. Now, the way you look at it is in two ways. If you're gonna use these types of platforms, if you're gonna use Amazon, Google, and Siri, all the assistants, if you're gonna use them, you gotta know what you're giving up. And there's my issue right away. So on Apple's privacy website, if you check it out on their website, they discuss the privacy breakdown. They don't fully disclaim or disclose what they're doing. And that's an issue for me because you need to know what you're giving away to get these benefits from Siri and everything. Like HomePod, if you're gonna be saying the phrase to her all the time, you need to know if somebody is listening. Now, another argument to this is simple. They need to do this because it also helps the damn thing get smarter. Now, it doesn't mean that they're gonna know who you are because according to the article, Apple encrypts the names, it's just you hear the voice. But even still, you need to be aware of this stuff and that's my issue with Apple. You know, you like to bash Android and talk about privacy on there. 
You're doing the same thing, maybe a little bit differently, but you're still doing it. And everyone likes to say that Apple is the most secure platform and they care about your data. Look, there is no care for data anymore at this stage. We are in an age where everybody knows everything about you. If you don't even wanna use your assistant, don't use your assistant. But at the end of the day, you need to be aware of this. And I think that that's the problem with Apple and they're not telling people and they are just as guilty as Android. So I'm not going to sit them aside and be like, yeah, a little different. But at the same time, I'm not going to be like, you know, it's the worst thing ever because there are other companies doing this. But I think that Apple should have been smarter about this and should have been honest and open because I do think they care about your data, but I think that they went around it the wrong way with trying to disclaim it to the public. Now, that's story number two. Story number three is just really a topic that's been going around on YouTube and Twitter. So on Twitter, I've been looking around, a lot of people have been reacting to Lou later. Now, if you guys don't know Unbox Therapy, Lou has his own podcast channel and he is pretty good on it. I don't watch the whole thing, but I only watch bits and clips because I just cannot stay and watch a whole hour because he just goes on and on and on and he's really slow when he talks, no disrespect. I respect Lou 100%. But his most recent video is about him being shocked about the issues that the uh, Pixel 3a is selling well and he was kind of confused and I kind of want to put my spin on it because everybody's been going around saying that it was confusing and weird and Tech Brand has made out his video and honestly I, I definitely advise you guys check out his video because he details it better than I probably will but I agree with everybody this is a very weird situation first of all he is are making a claim that the Pixel lineup is not a good lineup and that the fact that these sales are showing growth is kind of shocking to him. It's not shocking to me or anybody. Everybody bashed his phone when it came out. Oh, he doesn't have wireless charging, he's got plastic back, uh, it's, it's this, it's that. Look, this phone was made for a specific reason. The market doesn't need innovation anymore. It does need it desperately, but we're living in a generation where people just aren't expecting it anymore. All we need at this point is something called compromise that has been highlighted by front page tech. But I'm not gonna take his theory. I'm gonna put my spin on why I think they need compromise. The reason is simple. Look at the market for all smartphone platforms. Everyone is within 500, 600, 700, 800, and 1,000 above. The premier smartphones are at 1,000 plus. The people in this world do not wanna keep spending $1,000 on a device every two, three years. A device is supposed to be lasted for a long time. And iPhones are good examples. Some Androids are definitely some exceptions in there, but majority of the time you're paying for high priced phones that don't last you that long. But even then, you're paying high price, period. And this is what the phone was made for, to meet the average consumers. For $200, $300, $400, you're getting a great Android phone. You're getting a nice Android phone in my opinion, because honestly, the display is nice, the picture qualities are nice, you get a Snapdragon 670, which will do the job just fine, and you do get some premium smartphone features like dual speakers, you get a, a quad HD screen. Now, you don't get wireless charging, but you get fast charging. And still, that's a good feature. Everybody uses fast charging in some way shape or form so the thing is is that Lou my problem with your take is not that you're shocked or confused it's just that you're acting like you weren't this wasn't supposed to happen this was meant to be because when you price a phone at $300 and you're giving good quality stuff in there the average consumers are gonna go for that phone. It meets the price point, it meets the demands of what people want. And if you just want a phone that you can use, a regular everyday phone, that's the phone to go for. So I don't understand why he's making a big deal with this. And I think that this just shows that we don't need $600 phones to do the job. One camera is more than enough, two cameras is fine, three plus and then all that other crap. Look. It may be nice and fancy, but people every day are not going to utilize the power and harnesses all that stuff in the phone anyway. So getting a phone like that is completely fine. Now we don't know everything about the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL where that lies, but I can already see that's going in premium flagship territory. But all I'm going to say is this, I don't think anybody should be acting surprised. And at the same time, I don't think anybody should be making this a big deal. It's literally a good thing for Google because your pixel sales are going up and more people are getting aware of what your brand is and you're getting more units sold. And because it's stock Android, you get the updates faster. You get a lot more because you're using a pixel phone that's made by Google by their own software where they can optimize and they can definitely do much better. So I don't think there should be no shock. And again, there are some better alternatives, but for the price that you're paying for a 3A and a 3A XL, you get much more than what your money is willing to spend. And I think it is a great job. 
And that's where I stand on that. And I think Lou, I think you should understand both sides of the spectrum from the average consumer standpoint and from a business standpoint, because you have to meet both and make equilibrium in the ways that I learned in class anyway. You have to meet equilibrium and you also have to meet what people needs and wants. They have to separate those. But the point that I'm trying to make is this phone hits the nail on all of them. And that's my stance on Lou Later's uh, recap of the 3A and 3A XL. And that's it for Technoid. So guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, hit the dislike button. As always, guys, thank you for subscribing. And I will be going away for a few days, so there won't be any uploads for a little period of time. But I will be back relatively soon. So that's going to do it. Thank you for watching, and peace.